Surprise, still can't sleep. I mean, how can I sleep when, uh, I wake up and smell the coffee, you know, the, the watershed is here, you know, Niagara Falls. We live in Canada under a communist-like rule now. And, uh, of course, the propaganda machine in Canada is, of course, the media, but primarily supported by the CBC. Now, the CBC has always leaned towards at least in more recent decades, uh, the, the, the party in power because it's publicly funded. And I, I love the CBC, I do. Because it, it used to and still does support Canadian content. And to have Canadian content is extremely important to Canadian culture. Because Canada has a distinct culture from the United States and from other countries. It's not just, you know, copy and paste. We have our own traditions. We have our own um, language and uh, idioms and accents. You know, it's not, you know, of course, then we have, have Quebec, which uh, we would be all the lesser for if it wasn't there. What can I say? You know, and I'm reminded of, of some things, you know, obviously I've, I've mentioned Ai Weiwei before and why I see he's so important uh, to the art world and to the world in general. And I remember watching the, um, a documentary about his life and his studio practice in China and like around the time of the the Olympics okay so before this whole the whole Chinese propaganda machine went into overdrive uh, and the bird's nest uh, the bird's nest uh, stadium and, uh, you know, the ghost cities, and so on and so forth. They, you know, the, the whole economic machine before it was shown to be that the facade was just that. The facade of, of prosperous, communist, pseudo-capitalist China. With Shanghai being the economic trade center of its, of its beating, thus being its beating heart. Right, with Beijing being its 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 throbbing gristle of 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 a of a brain. And perhaps Wuhan is its main, one of the manufacturing centers. Now, if you don't know about Ai Weiwei, uh, he does installation art and conceptual art or concept art. Uh, you know, it's one of the few guys that I actually give a crap about with this stuff. Because uh, it's much simpler. It's much more uh, easier to understand. And I remember seeing his, um, the bicycles at uh, Nuit Blanche years ago, like 2012, 2013. Before... Uh, my career in aviation went haywire. Put it like that. And uh, through economic pressures and other family pressures or felt pressures uh, to make money and, and to thrive and find, find my own life. Uh, yeah. Now, naturally, Ai Weiwei had to find his way. Where is he? Find his way underneath his father, which was Ai Qing. 
so Ai Qing, uh, Jiang Hai Cheng, uh, born March 27, 1910, Jinhua uh, Zhejiang province, China, hopefully I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly, and died May 5th, 1996 in Beijing. Uh, as a Chinese poet whose free verse was influential in the development of Jinxi, uh, new poetry. The son of a well-to-do landowner, Ai Qing, was encouraged to learn Western languages. So this is from uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. He studied painting in Paris from 1928 to 1932, and he developed an appreciation for Western literature. He was imprisoned for his radical political activities, and he began to write poetry under his pen name. His first collection of verse, uh, De Hien, uh, De Yan, yeah, De, De Hien, uh, 1936, reflects his concerns for the common people of China. The title poem recalls a foster nurse called De Yan He in the poem. Yeah, that's what I probably De Yan He. Uh, who reared him. He went to Ya'an Ye in 1941 and ev eventually accepted the literary teachings of the Chinese Communist Party leader Mao Zedong. Uh, Ai Qing published a number of additional volumes in the 1940s, such as Kuang Ye, uh, Wilderness, Jing Tai Yang, uh, 1940, Towards the Sun, and uh, Bai Fang, uh, 1942 North. Uh, an advocate of free expression and the role of the writer as a social critic, Ai Qing used simple languages and freestyle in creating his socially oriented poems. So I'll just keep reading this. Uh, after 49, Ai Qing served on various cultural communities, but in 1957 he was officially censured as a writer for criticizing the communist regime. He remained silent for 21 years and was interned in labor camps in Haileongyang and Zhejiang. Uh, he began writing again in 1978, publishing books such as uh, Guli, uh, Gu, Guli Lai De Ge, uh, Song of Returning. Selected Poems of Ai Qing was published in 1982, and his entire oeuvre was published as Ai Qing. Guanji, uh, the complete works of Ai Qing in 1991. Ai Qing's son, Ai Weiwei, 1940, 1957, was noted noted artist and also an activist. So, you know, that's what's happening. You know, I look at the, the internet censure bill, SC-11, right now that's in the news or was in the news as published January 27th, uh, 2023. Uh, and then there was also during COVID, there was the, the talks of throttling and uh, further censuring and pressures upon ISPs to block certain websites uh, like 4chan, for example, or other radicalized uh, areas of the internet. So as to limit the uh, the spread of information and the communication of people outside of the channels that are are official, so to speak, and uh, it's already on video. You know the one comment and I, I I highlighted this before in another video of Trudeau uh, stating that he idolize, idolizes uh, communist China. For its efficiency and uh, proofs in the pudding, so to speak, you know. And then, then right now, currently, as as of today, and within the past a little bit, uh, so March seventh, uh, twenty twenty three, that uh, you know the the Chinese interference or you know implications of in the last election. Are, uh, are coming to the fore, uh, but you know, if you were actually paying attention to the information on the internet, this was already well known. 
you know, impossible tampering. Well, more than likely tampering, in my opinion, with the uh, last election of uh, between Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, especially with the, the precursor information, say like the Benghazi files or uh, what was on Hunter Biden's laptop, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the Uranium, Uranium One deal, a lot of embarrassing pho photography and whatnot, or if you want to even include Epstein in the whole thing, uh, because it's all, inter all, all correlated and interlinked, but not to a schizoid degree. Thank you very much. Um, you know, there's only so much information that I have, you know, only so much I can deduce from this information, you know, but eventually it all tumbles down. Uh, what's it? What about Yahoo? We Yahoo was we Yahoo purchased by a Chinese? Yahoo ownership history. Uh, owned by Verizon since twenty seventeen. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, one of the other influences to the current Canadian uh, political landscape, and I've said this in another video, was, uh, you know, Michael Korvig and Michael Spavor uh, being political prisoners, prisoners within China, and they weren't released until the, what's her face, uh, Meng, Meng Wanzhou, uh, Wanzhou, yeah, uh, the uh, Huawei, Huawei uh, CEO or whatever the heck she is, you know, and as it is with China, you know, obviously the central planning, you know, many, many corporations are, you know, uh, like a, a degree or two away uh, from, from the Communist Party. And... Uh, that's where we are, you know. Uh, if you go, if you go and listen to, you go and listen to, say, a channel like uh, on YouTube here, like China Uncensored, uh, with Mister Chapel. You know, obviously him being that's his main concern and having much more firsthand experience. Uh, I trust what he has to say. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. That fart had nothing to do with you, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but like the reason why I mentioned, uh, I weigh, weigh and again, the bicycles and I think about the, the, the clay pots, the large clay pot pots that he was manufacturing in the, uh, the documentary and then also the, the sunflower seeds and so they, it has, a uh, you know, obviously it's a commentary on, on poverty and a loss of identity because you're, you're, you're forced into this fight, flight, or freeze um, living, right? And the identity is erased in order to become compliant to the state, right? No ownership. Uh. Right, and there's uh, what that one video was at the mo most depressing place on earth, and it's uh, it's a steel mill. It's one of the largest in the entire world, and the trains play. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. Da 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 da. da. It's just dystopic. Goodness Lord. Now, obviously, you know, it's about seven o'clock right now. I just did that short video beforehand about, uh, whatever. Um, uh, just a reminder that this is a current article. Well, current enough, 
December 12th, Apple made China the backbone of its iPhone assembly. Shifting away could take years. And so what got us into this mess is, is obviously bankers, you know, it's one of the all, the all consuming, uh, motivating uh, organizations as to why we go to war, right? They're the ones that if there's no funding, there's no war. And, uh, you know, again, not, not, not to, not to pick on, on, on Jews or anyone religion in particular, because, you know, there's Christians in China as well as there's Jews and there's Buddhists and Taoists and so on and so forth. Uh, but you can't ignore the, uh, the legacy of the, the Rothschild family. You know, and um, you can't ignore the uh, the trap, the debt trap that happens, and uh, you know, baiting people's ambition in order to compete on a world scale to take on larger opponents, so to speak. And uh, China's faltering, obviously, after what? Well, you know, their censorship is well known. And you know their their aggression and and their tactics against Taiwan is well known, and then as it was against Hong Kong previously, you know how how those protests happened uh, in twenty nineteen before COVID came through, and then then the treatment of Chinese people during COVID, you know welding people inside their their buildings, um, you know just absolutely terrible. You know, the zero COVID uh, policy, uh, allowing people to starve inside, inside their own apartment buildings, not letting them out, you know, uh, completely off the rails, you know, exterminator level, uh, bug men, so to speak, as offensive as that is. And I know people as missionaries in China. And uh, my family's had exchange students uh, from China, and we helped them go through through high school here in in, in Ontario. Excuse me. Excuse me. You can laugh at that all you like. <laughs> you can't laugh at a fart. There's something wrong with you. Like my family's had numerous exchange students over the years. So where I'm going with this is that, uh, you know, there's, there's more than enough comparison and reason, uh, to support this, uh, this in encroaching authoritarian the communist dictatorship that is being supported, you know, um, and I, I, this is probably going to be a controversial opinion, uh, based on observation, but, you know, more than likely Hitler didn't want to go to war. He didn't want to go to war. Uh, but the, the banking system was leveraging him. Uh, to it was either either okay so you either we we call in um, France uh, to invade or Britain or you take on Poland you know if you don't take on Poland and then Czechoslovakia then that's what's going to happen you know because they had the gold and he who has the gold makes the rules and as I said, you know, the Roth, seven Rothschild's children were sent across Europe and worked their way into the very top levels of, of society. And if you remember correctly, the short story of, of course, Germany before the Second World War was the absolute the depression after the Treaty of Versailles. 
And then, in, you know, there was Hitler organized uh, by whatever means, as, as people say, you know, because, you know, history is written by the victors and even it has its own propaganda. You know, a lot of the, the stuff that's said is not exactly true. I know that I, I don't know this for a fact, but just through observation of all the information I've seen over the years, you know, you know, the uh, the machine against uh, Nazi Germany is completely unfair. Because, it, 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 you know, it, it, as I said in, in the previous video, you know, um, the swastika is a symbol of God consciousness. And Germany had a long tradition of, of Christianity, very long tradition. And Weimar Germany was only happened because of an organization uh, through fascism. Uh, you know, so again, uh, a state organized financial system and through the trades to bring them up. And then thus, you know, okay, so baby bonuses uh, to increase population by getting rid of, you know, mortgages and so forth and taking the power back from the banks. Uh, and then, of course, burning uh, gay and transgender uh, bullshit, honestly, because uh, there was libraries and such, such a thing and, you know, deviancy, as, as it was called, deviant art, um, degenerate art, right? Uh, and... You know, as with the excess and the access to drugs, say like cocaine or opium, uh, which would have been the preferred substances at the time, besides alcohol. Uh, you got to remember, okay, so with the alcohol, so then I'm going to correlate that to prohibition in the United States. And also conversely, well, not, cor not directly correlated. The United States during its isolation years was fascist. Let's not forget that. And there's there's people on, on, on YouTube here that have done lots of research about this. And it's, uh, you know, obviously it's memory holds so that we forget you know, through this repetitious uh, 30 to a minute, well, 15 to a minute and a half long attention span that's been, you know, popularized by TikTok. Because TikTok is Chinese propaganda. It is a demonstration of technological ability. And that's another means, like, uh, again, it, propaganda doesn't have to be art or video or, you know, the uh, weaponized art in general. It can be the demonstration uh, via technology or people, right? You think about uh, going further. You know, it's it's well known now, and it, you know it's finally coming around because you know the the institutional machine of bureaucracy uh, grinds to a halt at, in in the Senate of the Roman Forum. You know, because that's that's the uh, that's like the the model. Of the Republic, right? The United States of America is a republic, uh, based upon you know Roman structure, you know, because that's that's the that's the symbology in in all the buildings of the U.S. government. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. So this authoritarian technological oppression, which encourages us to forget about the history. You know, I bet you if you walked up to someone, they wouldn't even know uh, who Ai Weiwei is anymore. Just someone on the street, like I weigh who, right? What? How's he important? Well, 
his work, as I said before, is about uh, oppression and the loss of identity in the face of of communist rule. Because, you know, okay, so you look at the documentary and you're just sitting there and all, all of his, his studio workers uh, are taking these clay sunflower seeds and painting the stripes on them. You know, and you think about the manufacturing centers of China. And if you ever watch, uh, these are great films. What's it? Uh, Baraka, uh, Kono Asinaski, um, let's see, remember his name. Uh, Ron Frick, so uh, a visionary filmmaker, and I've watched these his films uh, more than a few times. Uh, it's very they're very good under the influence. I'll tell you that much. But they're they're fantastic on their own. Uh, they're very much well. There's no there's no. There's no, uh, there's no dialogue in them. It's all visual language and symbology. So they're not for everyone, but I highly recommend you do watch them because there's a message in there and there's some, some scenes which are in like, say like a meat packing plant in China. Uh, the one scene that I remember vividly Right, where the person just looks up at the camera for a second and then goes back to work. Right, just another robot in the machine. And um, so I think about, okay, so what is it? Extraordinary warfare. And the fifth, full spectrum, fifth generation uh, warfare, electronic, and by any other means. So the culture, um, and otherwise. And, uh, you know, again, one of my favorite topics, you know, uh, LGBTQ people, um, you think about the one child policy and the, the amount of people that are in China and the effect that had on, obviously on, on, you know, uh, orphaned women. And so then, you know, the, the population is completely out of whack. And so there's way more men than there are women. So the frequency, you know, the, the men having fewer options, they turn to homosexuality much more frequently, which just brings about collapse that that much quicker of uh, particular de demographics uh you know with, with the the mouse utopia principle and it's not insulting to say that that's it's just it's just documented you know the experiment it go with every time without fail uh It's not that I'm running out of steam. It's just that I can't sleep with when inspiration strikes. When you think about this, and again, obviously, I don't want to sit here in front of a computer anymore and just watch it all happen. Uh, you know, you see things on the internet that really affect you after a while. And there's this thing out there that says that there's no more true Chinese people. They've all been overrun by uh, a, a demographic of, of mongrels. So people from Mongolia and elsewhere. The, what's it? I can't tell you exactly, 
but then you see the, uh, the lack of care for safety and value of human life and the frequency, you know, people you know, get, get killed on the street there. And it's just like, oh, whatever, whatever, you know, numerous uh, gifts. I would say like people getting electrocuted and it's just another day or, or, or whatever, because there's so many of them. There's so many of them. Like everyone there is replaceable. And uh, having been through contracting and my knowledge about aviation here in Canada and watching the same thing happen, you know, these people that get imported um, from all across the world for working visas and they'll basically work for nothing because it's the best thing that they've ever had. And then they get manipulated into these contracts like uh, working contracts, like those people that, that helped build uh, Dubai because Dubai was built on slave labor. It was, I remember reading an article about that. It was it, uh, people from Myanmar and so forth were in, in labor camps and they buy from the company store and the terrible living conditions, like hundreds of people per, uh, per trailer, you know, large trailers, large uh, centers like barracks and, and so forth. Little, little to no privacy. Uh, obviously I pride, I pride, I pride, I say I, uh, I prize, I prize uh, privacy in my own life. Despite doing these videos now, I didn't really want to be seen. Because when you're trying to collect information, the worst thing that you can do is expose yourself as an intellectual. And, uh, it's a lot easier to track people now than you think it is. You know, despite, you know, the social credit score that, uh, China, China has. Uh, we have something similar with credit cards, you know, financial credit and the, the debt system, the debt slavery, you know, cause, uh, that's what happens to students here in North America you immediately because, you know, the debt free graduate doesn't exist anymore because of the, the inflation, the cost of living and the speculation. And the whole thing gone awry. Canada is communist now. It is. And that's one of the reasons why I can't sleep at night. Is because I didn't... I didn't make art just to become a slave. You know, I didn't, I didn't get into aviation just to get behind the eight ball and people will critique me for my financial practices or, or whatever, because, uh, you know, they've made millions and millions of millions and millions of dollars off of, off of, uh, you know, good timing or whatever else, or they started off with $10 million and that's how they became a millionaire. I really don't have much more to say about it. I just wanted to be an independent person. And I know there's a lot of people out there that didn't fight for this. They didn't die for this. They didn't, they're not going to war for these people. I wouldn't. Not for, uh, Sleepy Joe, not for Trudeau, not for Boris, not for Macron or Zelensky. No, thank you. So you don't fight Russia. As a tangent, knowing a little bit about their history is seriously tragic.
before before the rise of communism and then communism made it even worse so what do you do when you're desperate you fight back and uh, the pen is mightier than the sword See you soon. Damn it.